Welcome, game developer hobbyists! Back in August of 2019, following my first game development foray with the classic game Pong, I turned my sights on the next step. I wanted to build a simple 2D game using sprites, and chose to pursue this goal with another classic game, Snake. The result is Garden of Eating, now featuring both a quick game mode and story mode. In this first episode, I'll be talking a little about SFML, the framework I chose to leverage for building my game. Then I'll take you through the creation of the initial splash screen. Future episodes will delve into the design and coding of the actual gameplay. So what is SFML? The acronym stands for Simple and Fast Multimedia Library. It's a framework written in C++ that can help you build games and other multimedia applications. For the Garden of Eating, I make use of modules for managing windows, rendering graphics using OpenGL, playing sound and music, and synchronizing events with the game clock. For this game, I wanted to stick with C++, and I liked how the API was organized in SFML. In the future, I'll be trying out other game frameworks like Godot and Unity, but for this game, SFML seemed to suit my goals perfectly. Our first task was to create the initial splash screen, while leaving enough screen space for the main menu to appear later. After finding a suitable font and some music, and getting some of the artwork in place, it was time to give SFML a try. Most monitors today run in a resolution of at least 1920 by 1080 which is an aspect ratio of 1.7 repeating. SFML class Render Window is what we want to use for 2D graphics. I chose to open the game in a smaller window, but with the same aspect ratio. The SFML View class is what we use to set up the coordinate system. No matter how large or small the user expands the window, the graphics we draw will stretch accordingly. The SFML Texture class is used to load an image into the graphics card's memory. And the SFML Sprite class is used to draw that image in the window. The SFML Music class makes it easy to load audio files and play them in a repeating loop in a separate processing thread. At this stage, the game loop will be quite simple. It ends when the user closes the window. The one extra event we want to capture is when the user resizes the window. To prevent the splash screen from becoming distorted, we will be calculating the desired width and height of the view coordinates according to the size of the window. A window that's wider than our desired aspect ratio fills the left and right sides of the window with a solid green color. A tall window fills the top and bottom instead. These three statements are all we need to redraw the green background and splash image. SFML takes care of the rendering details by making its own calls to OpenGL. The final step in the game loop involves checking how much time has passed since the last cycle in the loop. If we don't tell the thread to sleep for a short period of time, our game will end up using 100% of one of the computer's CPU cores. In this case, I'm aiming to redraw the window roughly 60 times per second. The splash screen is now working, but everything is in a single file in the main function. Our game is eventually going to grow far beyond this, so at this stage I wanted to refactor this into something a little more modular and easy to maintain. I'll be splitting up my code into what I call a controller and a renderer. You can think of the Splash Scene Controller class as a scene manager. It's responsible for managing the state of the splash screen based on user inputs. It will delegate the rendering of its state to the window to the Splash Scene Renderer class. The Game Client class handles the main gameplay loop. It knows which scene is currently active, and delegates processing of inputs and rendering to that scene's controller. Eventually, it'll be responsible for managing the transitions between the different scenes in the game. Having the Game Client manage the game loop turns our main method into a simple three-line program. This sets the stage for us to build the simple version of the Snake clone. In the next video, we'll go through the code changes needed to get the snake moving around on the playing field.